Welcome to Equine Guelph Research Radio, brought to you by SSG Gloves. I'm Norm Board. Thanks for joining us. Dr. John Prescott has been on the leading edge of battling the dangerous rhodococcal equi bacteria that causes fatal flu in young foals. What's being done to fight it, and how are they progressing? That's up next on Equine Guelph's Research Radio. You know, SSG Gloves has a history of providing cutting-edge riding and driving gloves to the entire equine community. Once again, they lead the way with the SSG Digital Glove with patented DigiGrip technology for the ultimate in grip, breathability, and durability. And it's machine washable. Join Eric LeMays and the SSG Revolution with the Digital Glove. Our guest today has dedicated the last 30 years of his professional life to OVG and its pathology department. And while Dr. John Prescott officially retired on May 1st, he is still actively involved in his life's mission, which is to eradicate the often deadly rhodococcal equi bacterium, which occurs primarily in young foals, manifesting itself in the form of a flu-like disease. Dr. Prescott, welcome. Thank you. Uh, some of us uh, lay people uh, tend to confuse bacterium with virus. I know I did at the start. Uh, the uh, rhodococcal equi is a bacterium. Explain that. Yes, it is a bacterium. Bacteria are much, much bigger than viruses, and they can live outside cells, whereas viruses have to live in cells that depend on host cell machinery. Now, I understand one of the problems lies with the immune system of the foal itself at the early stage of life, and, and that's when it's most vulnerable to the uh, disease caused by the bacterium. Could you elaborate on that? Yeah, rhodococcus um, usually occurs in foals when they're between three and eight weeks of age. So they're usually young young foals. They, they it cause a very chronic infection. The, the bacteria live inside the phagocytic uh, cells of Foals, so they actually paradoxically they they're exactly in the cell that's uh, designed to uh, usually to kill them. The the problem is that foals, very young foals, seem to be predisposed to the wrong type of immune response. Uh, in order to get a good immune response to Rhodococcus equi, you have to have what's called a cell mediated immune response. You have to have a, a way to improve the um, killing of the bacterium by by cells, and the organism itself, and and so also the the young foal um, seems to drive the wrong type of immune response. It drives more of an antibody immune response, which doesn't sound bad, maybe, except that it has the effect of of decreasing the cell mediated immune response. Yeah. The very young foal, which makes it more susceptible. And there's something about the organism itself which, which helps to drive that. Now, I understand, though, as the foal gets older, uh, that foal does develop uh, the tools necessary uh, biologically to fight off the disease, correct? Right. Okay. Now, your research has established protocols in involving ways to help kill our equi, but the problem lies in the methodology. Uh, why is that? Well, some of the research we did very early on, probably 30 years ago, was, was find the right antibiotics to to kill the organism. Um, before that, people were treating with the wrong antibiotics, and we, we, we found the ones which actually get inside cells where, where the organism is, and we, we've discovered the combinations, the mixtures of antibiotics which, which would help to kill the organism. The problem of antibiotic use is it, it is expensive, it, you know, it's difficult. Folds have to be treated uh, probably for six weeks or so, so you know it's, it's expensive um, and you know cumbersome. And we, we we need other other ways to do it. Another approach is is on foal sick farms or rhodococcus farms is to give foals plasma from horses which have been immunized with rhodococcus, and it, it works quite well. It's not perfect, but it works quite well to reduce illness anyway. Uh, but again, it's extremely expensive. So, the, so I'm sorry. I was going to say. So the issue now is is to find a way to uh, make the whole process commercially viable, isn't it? Yeah. So the issue now really is is to is to find a way to find a vaccine because vaccines are inexpensive. It's the least expensive of the sort of interventions really to prevent um, disease. The, the challenge, of course, is is to uh, try to. Um, vaccinate foals or find a vaccine that's going to work in foals when they're about two weeks of age at a time when they're, they have slightly impaired uh, immune system. So it really is a, 
is challenging. We'll be back with Dr. John Prescott in just a moment. SSG Gloves. You've trusted them for years to deliver quality, durable, and stylish riding and driving gloves. And they continue to deliver with the SSG Hybrid, the best of both worlds with appearance, grip, and durability. Premium Cabretta Leatherback for optimum fit and feel. Suede Palm for soft touch regardless of weather. The SSG Hybrid, where style meets substance. Available at your SSG retailer. Now back to research radio. How close are we to uh, developing um, that? I, th- I, I think we're, we're uh, surprisingly close. We we, we showed uh, many years ago that it actually is possible to to immunize uh, folds if you lo- you, by mouth if you use uh, live virulent bacteria, and so we we've established the sort of the, the concept you know, that that is possible. And we and others have spent a lot of time trying to weaken the bacteria, try to. Pr- pr- uh, produce what's called mutants of kind of weakened bacteria which have enough sort of energy to produce a good immune response but not actually to go on to uh, to uh, hurt the horse. Now, from what I've read, part of the issue lies in the mare's colostrum not having the proper stuff, as it were, uh, um, to help their well, foal. Certainly, um, some people have taken the approach of immunizing mares, and, and uh, certainly in Argentina, mares are immunized against uh, the, the problem of, of immunizing mares is, I mean, they, they will pass the antibody over to the foal through colostrum. The problem is that antibody doesn't last very long. Mm. I mean, it lasts for maybe you know, three or four weeks, while the foals get rheticoccus when they're aged between, you know, three and eight weeks or mm. or, or older. So it's, it, it's an adjunct, but what, we're, what we want is, is active immunity, not... Passive immunity. Ma- vaccinating mares produce passive immunity, and it's kind of short-lasting. Right. And anyway, antibodies are only, you know, they're not the whole story. To get proper immunity, you need cell-mediated immunity. In the meantime, it, it's about prevention, I would assume. Uh, crowding of foals, you mentioned, is, is an issue that uh, makes the situation ripe for the uh, for the disease, correct? Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's always e- easy to to say crowding, but um, we do see the disease build up on farms where there have been lots of folds over many years, and uh, sometimes it's hard to know what to do about crowding. You, I mean, you can say, well, you know, let's try to remove manure, let's try to reduce crowding. It's, it's easier to say than to do. It would be much better to have a, a vaccine, uh, which would... Which, 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 um, it's much more reliable. What about general farm hygiene? Could, could more improvements in that area be be helpful? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's been lots of work um, suggesting that if you remove feces and you plant grass and you reduce all the sort of the sand pits around which foals uh, play, that that could all be be helpful. The organism loves horse manure. It lives on horse manure. It loves the constituents, <laughs> so you can get a buildup of infection on uh, around the stables, so you know, in the loafing paddocks. And so on. Again, um, removing feces is all is all good, but it's it's quite hard to do on on very busy busy sure. farms. So we need we need simpler interventions, probably. Now you have worked a long time on this, and and I understand that many of your colleagues, in appreciation of of the groundbreaking work you've done, uh, are looking at perhaps renaming the uh, the bacterium from rhodococcal to what is it now, Prescott? What is it? Pres- Prescottella. Yeah, the, the, I, I was very uh, very sort of felt very honoured by the suggestion. I'm not sure it's ever going to happen because um, a lot depends on the true understanding of the taxonomy of this large group of bacteria called uh, Rhodococcus, and there's still arguments uh, within the people who understand taxonomy, which I I really do not, um, as to whether Rhodococcus equi truly is is within the Rhodococcus or whether it should be somewhere else. It's certainly, it's a a nice idea. Uh, I was delighted that people suggested it, but I, I'm not sure if it will ever happen in my, my lifetime. But well, we'll it, it speaks very well of you, and, and certainly we we at Research Radio appreciate your uh, taking the time to talk to us today. Uh, continue success. Enjoy what some people wouldn't consider retirement, but to you it is, I guess. So you're still active uh, in your work, and uh, perhaps you'll have a bit more time to uh, go back to some pleasure riding, I understand. 
great yes yes perhaps I'm still trying to figure out uh, <laughs> I've only just retired so I'm still trying to figure out the next next steps so thanks very much Norm all the best sir thank you